be your moderator for this session. And we are here for a bright and sunny outlook, overcoming email overwhelm with the stack method. Our presenter today is Sarah Hagen with the College of Engineering. Please feel free to put any questions in chat as they arise, and we will address them all at the end. Sarah, thank you. Hi, everybody. It's great to see you. I'm Sarah Hagen. Uh, thanks for joining me in this after lunch uh, slot to talk today about a problem that we all face. The problem is simply this. There are so many messages, so many emails, the flow is constant, and this is precisely how I feel when I open my inbox a lot of the time. And so the uh, the reason that I decided to, to give this flash talk is this is actually a, a continuation of a talk that I uh, gave in 2021, where I was kind of hoping to open up a conversation of techniques for, for email management. And I had some ideas uh, back then. So this is um, where I started uh, back then, which was reading Cal Newport's book, A World Without Email. And uh, Cal Newport talks about the, the hyperactive hive mind. And what that what that means is when you're when you're looking at your inbox and you're bouncing from one task to the other, um, you're doing too much at once and jumping back and forth. So that's called focus switching. You might answer one thing and then notice, oh, I have to do this. It's kind of like when you walk through your house and you pick up something and say, oh, that goes over there. And then, oh, I need to do this. And then you move on to the next task and suddenly you've forgotten why you walked into that room in the first place. Um, so focus switching takes a lot of energy. It drains our attention and it makes it hard to kind of stay focused. Um, solving problems on the fly, we end up trying to respond in the moment. Um, we start to develop this idea, this mis mismatched expectation uh, and sense of urgency that we have to respond to the person right away. I've gotten this message, the beep went off, and now I have to send back a response right away. And this makes us really distracted and it can lead to a lot of anxiety, I think. Um, so my goals for today's flash talk, we have just a brief 15 minutes here. Um, I'm hoping that you walk away with at least one idea for making your email less stressful and more manageable. Um, I'm going to recap my 2021 uh, presentation. I'm gonna talk about a strategy that did not work. And then I'm gonna explain the best method that I've found so far for managing my email, how I've customized it and how you can learn more about that. Um, and so this actually is, I just popped this screenshot in a few minutes ago. This is what my inbox looks like uh, today. I did not wanna be a hypocrite going into this presentation. Um, and so you can see there is literally nothing in my inbox, including on my other tab, I just deleted 600 things that were sitting over there. Um, so let's get into it and think about, this is not a brand new email account. This is my existing email account. Um, so let's get into it and see how you can get to this calm feeling of looking at your inbox. Um, so some previous tips from my last presentation. It's funny, I went back through the slides and actually it was it was a pretty decent presentation. I learned something. So to recap, um, some tips, don't hit send immediately. Um, the schedule send button is a really great one, especially um, if you're like me, I tend to get like a second wind in the afternoon and I'll start drafting messages like around three o'clock, four o'clock. And I realized that my colleagues who are early risers and tend to hit the office um, around seven in the morning, they might have already left for the day. Um, and a lot of people just really don't like getting new tasks, new emails at that time in the day, because you feel like you don't really want to deal with it then. So I like to schedule those emails to go out the next morning when people are feeling fresh and more ready to respond. I think about the time of day, um, you know, anything that goes out on a Friday afternoon, probably nobody's going to look at or deal with. So you might as well wait and send it on Monday. Um, 
And then enabling the undo feature in Outlook is really good. That really is just adding a delay to your message. Um, and you can set the number of seconds that it will count before it actually sends the message between the time that you click send and the time that the message goes out. Um, but that gives you that opportunity to say, oh, oops, I, I wanted to add something else. Click the undo button and add that. Don't CC the world. Um, try to make sure that your email is really targeted to the people who are supposed to be receiving the message and nobody else. Use BCC when appropriate. Um, a main focus of my last presentation was talking about project boards, um, things like Microsoft Planner, Trello, Asana, to get the projects out of your email and into some other system. My problem is that um, I don't, I, my problem is that I work with a lot of different teams um, and I don't control how those teams are going to, to operate. Um, so they're not all using kind of project management, things like this, and it would just be an impossible lift for me to get people on board with those kinds of systems. So I really do have to use um, email for probably 80% of my work. Um, one way though to avoid emailing files is to use box file upload requests links. So if you're the owner of a, a folder, you can create a request link and then send that link to a person that helps with workflows where people are sending files uh, back and forth. If you can have them avoid that step of emailing it to you and then you upload it to a folder, that tends to cut down on some of the messages. And then using Google Docs, Box, or a database so that you have one version and not multiple versions of those files is another way to avoid emailing those files around. Another question is, you know, should this email be a phone call? You know, we used to say, should this meeting be an email? Um, but sometimes if you find yourself writing a really long essay about something or something that just has too many considerations and you're worried that somebody you know, might not read it carefully enough or if it's really just more than a paragraph or two, um, it's worth thinking about, should I talk to this person um, either in a phone call or a Teams meeting or walking over to their office, depending on my work setup? Um, sometimes just talking to the person can be helpful. And then you might have noticed on my um, snapshot of my current inbox that there's a focused side and there's an other side. If you use focused inbox, and you can just Google that to learn how to turn it on, um, it will sweep automatically things like mailing lists and newsletters, things that um, you don't necessarily need to read right then off into an entirely other side of your inbox called other. And so it's important to still check that other side of the, the inbox every so often, but by keeping that split between focused and other, you can stay focused on the important messages. And there are options if it sorts something into the wrong side of the, of the folder, you can tell it, oh, in the future, always put this in the focused side of the inbox. So you do have to kind of train it a little bit at the beginning, but once you have it trained, it works really, really well. Okay, so a strategy that I was kind of tinkering with um, back in 2021, I, I mentioned at the end of that presentation was this idea of maybe having folders for days of the week. And I just want to say that does not work. Do not do that. It's a bad strategy. <laughs> Um, so what does work? My latest and greatest solution for email management um, is the stack method. I learned about this on a productivity podcast. I don't remember which podcast, um, but it's from a company called Double Gemini. And the stack method is um, kind of, uh, it's a free method that they give people, I think, with the hopes of attracting people toward their other products and workshops. Um, but the stack method I find really, really does work. Um, so today I'm gonna give you just kind of a brief introduction to uh, the method. And then I would encourage you to visit their website as they have um, several videos that explain how the process is supposed to work. Um, the heart of the method is using action folders 
and quickly classifying your email once or twice per day. And so these are my first, um, my six main action folders here. Um, so the idea um, is based on batching. So you know how um, if you're making a grocery list and you, if you just have kind of a random list of things that you need when you're in the store, it can be kind of frustrating and like, okay, I've got broccoli at the top of the list, but there's salad at the bottom of the list and you kind of bounce back and forth trying to keep everything organized. Um, what this does is basically you're sorting your list and saying, okay, I want all the produce over here and I want all the canned stuff over here and all the dairy stuff's gonna be in this part of the list. So as I go through, my inbox, I sort everything into, is this something that needs a quick reply? I have to think about it, but it's going to be a fairly brief process of just sending an answer to a person. Um, is it something that's going to take more than five minutes? That's why this is the to do five plus uh, folder. I like that it's the number two and it's also to do. Um, you put anything in there that's going to take more than five minutes and then there's another step I'll talk about in a minute. The meet folder is where I put anything that has uh, meeting agendas, things I'm going to need to refer to in a meeting that I have planned, um, or scheduling uh, requests, invitations to meet where I need to, to do some scheduling. The remind folder is where I put uh, things that I want to check back periodically, like maybe once a week and be like, oh, yep, that's still on the back burner. I don't want to lose track of that, but there it is. The forward folder is for delegating. So if you have um, lots of messages where you need to act on those by delegating them to something else, to someone else, they go in that part. And then the review folder is for items that you want to come back to, maybe like reference materials or recordings of things. Maybe you say, oh, I'm going to have some time in July where I have an hour in the afternoon and I can actually have time to read that article. Those things kind of go in that folder. So the theory is in the morning you would classify anything that's come in since the last time that you sorted your folders. Another important step is actually scheduling your items that are in the to-do folder. And this is the part I think that has really revolutionized email management for me, um, is these little tags. And I think they mentioned this in the method, but I might have kind of added um, onto it. So what you do is you right click on the, the email and there's this button called categorize. And then you can use that to make um, whatever tags that you need to organize your life. And I really recommend one called scheduled um, because that to me means that I have not only noticed this task, I've thought about this task, so I can do this while I go through my to-do folder, but I've thought about how much time it's gonna take and I've thought about when I'm going to do it. So I put it on my calendar for the time that I think it's going to take. And so after you have the items in the to-do folder, you want to actually put them on your calendar. Um, and you might think, oh, that's going to clog up my calendar and then nobody's going to be able to schedule a meeting. It reduces my flexibility. What I like to do is, um, again, right click on the calendar item. There's a show as button and then you can um, mark the item as free if you want. So then people can still schedule on top of those windows, but you see, okay, if no meeting fills into this slot, this is the task that I'm planning to do that day. This makes your work visible. And the, the importance of making the work visible, I think we don't always realize how long it's gonna take to um, email to check our emails or to do the work that's associated with emails or respond to a thing. And so having that be visible on your calendar, I think helps you stay organized and it helps um, you to be able to explain, well, where did the day go? This is not magic. Uh, you do have to review the folders regularly and systematically. You have to move them out of the folder when you're done with them. That's kind of the fun part. And my version is not a perfect application of this method. Um, they suggest only using archive or delete. I use more specific folders. Um, they suggest flagging emails um, with priorities for the day. I haven't quite mastered that part of it. And 
I don't limit checking email twice a day. It, I'm going to try that sometime, but I haven't gotten there yet. And then the remind and the forward folders, I haven't really figured out yet. But I went on vacation recently and I came back to 129 emails in my focus inbox. And by noon, it looked like this. So I can say that the method works. I can say that I feel calm when I look at my inbox because I know that I've read everything and I know where it is. Uh, to learn more, go to the stackmethod.com, which has a set of free videos. And I do also recommend their file management workshop for, which is discounted for educators, but that is a different flash talk. Thank you very much. Well, Sarah, that was literally perfect timing. We just hit our time for the session. So thank you very much. Um, since we won't have time for questions now, if people have any, um, would it be okay if people contacted you via email with any questions? I am always excited to talk about email management. <laughs> and, and which folder would that go into then? <laughs> um, that would go in the meet folder if they were requesting a meeting, or it would go in the reply folder if they just had a quick question, or if they had an idea for a project, it might end up in the to-do folder. So it all kind there of depends. Go. Yeah. All right, Sarah, thank you very much for this uh, very fun presentation. I also want to put a thank you shout out to Amanda Thornton, who is running all the tech behind the scenes for us. Hope you all enjoy the rest of the virtual uh, conference. Take care, everybody.